Hello there. Hi and welcome. Welcome to the Good News Sunday Show. My name is Sonia McCullough Lockridge and I am your host. And I joy, I joy to come to you in this fashion. And what we are doing in this season, we are doing what I have titled as the only hope, the only hope for a numb nation. And that also has a an additional title, and the additional title is 60 Days of Hope. And what we are doing therein is we are reading through the book of Jeremiah online and out loud. And we are reading the book of Jeremiah in its entirety, in its entirety. And in addition to that, each day we pose a question and a keyword. We pose a question from the text and we pull a keyword from the text. And so today, today is day 49 of 60 Days of Hope. Today is 49, and we are in chapter 40. Chapter 40, day 49. And our question of the day is, who is Jed Aliyah? Who is Jed Aliyah? That is our question of the day. And our keyword for today is Mizpah, Mizpah, Mizpah. And so that's our question of the day and our keyword of the day. And we will just begin reading in chapter 40 of the book of Jeremiah. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzardan, 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 captain of the bodyguard, had released him from Ramah, which he had taken him bound in chains among all the exiles of Jerusalem and Judah who were being exiled to Babylon. Now the captain of the bodyguard had taken Jeremiah and said to him, the Lord your God promised this calamity against this place. And the Lord has brought it on and done just as he promised, because you people sinned against the Lord and did not listen to his voice. Therefore, this thing has happened to you. But now, behold, I am freeing you today from the chains which are on your hands. If you would prefer to come with me to Babylon, come along, and I will look after you. But if you would prefer not to come along with me to Babylon, never mind. Look, the whole land is before you. Go wherever it seems good and right for you to go. As Jeremiah was still not as Jeremiah was still not going back, he said, Go on back then to Jodiah, the son of Akaham, the son of Shaphan, who the king of Babylon has appointed over the cities of Judah, and stay with him among the people, or elsewhere go, anywhere it seems right for you to go. So the captain of the bodyguard gave him a ration and a gift and let him go. Then Jeremiah went to Mizpah to Jediah, the son of Achaham, and stayed with him among the people who were left in the land. Now all the commanders of the forces that were in the field, they and their men heard that, king, that the king of Babylon had appointed Jediah, the son of Achaham, over the land, and that he had put in charge of the men, women, and children, those of the poorest of the land who had not been exiled to Babylon. So they came to Jeldiah at Mitzpah, along with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Jonathan, and Jonathan, the sons of Korah, and Sariah, the son of Tan Huma, and the son of Epa, the son of Netumanite, and Jezaniah, the son of Makatite, 
both they and their men. I apologize. I butchered those words. I did. And I am greatly sorry. Greatly, greatly sorry. And I will go and learn how to pronounce them. So if I happen to run across those words again, I will at least have pronounced them one time correctly in my life. So we're moving on to verse 9. Then Jeldiah, the son of Akham, the son of Shaphan, swore to them and to the men, saying, Do not be afraid of serving the Chaldeans. Stay in the land and serve the king of Babylon, that it may go well with you. Now as for me, behold, I am going to stay at Mitzvah to stand for you before the Chaldeans who come to us. But as for you, gather in wine and summer, fruit and oil, and put them in your storage vessels, and live in your cities that you have taken over. Likewise, also, all the Jews who were in Moab and among the sons of Ammon and in Edom and who were in all the other countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant for Judah and that he had appointed over them Jediah, Jediah the son of Achon, the son of Shaphan. Then all the Jews returned from all the places to which they had been driven away and came to the land of Judah, to Jediah at Mizpah, and gathered in wine and summer fruit in great abundance. Now Jonathan, the son of Kareah, and all the commanders of the forces that were in the field came to Jediah at Mizpah and said to him, Are you well aware the Baals, the kings of the sons of Ammon, have sent Ishmael, the son of Natatiah, to take your life. But Jediah, the son of Akaham, did not believe them. Then Jonathan, the son of Korea, spoke secretly to Jediah in Mizpah, saying, Let me go and kill Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and not a man will know. Why should he take your life so that all the Jews who have gathered to you would be scattered and the remnant of Judah would perish. But Jedediah, the son of Achaham, said to Jonathan, the son of Kiriah, Do not do this thing, for you are telling a lie about Ishmael. So, he tried to warn them. He tried to warn them that they were out for his life, but they did not listen. And we will learn more about that in chapter 41 of the book of Jeremiah. Now, we started this journey in chapter number 52 on or about the fourth day of August. So we will complete our reading process on or about the second day of October. And... Reading this book has been amazing to me. Reading this particular book of the Bible, Jeremiah, a book of the Bible I had always wanted to study but never did. There are not that many studies out there on the book of Jeremiah. Um, it's not like the book of Isaiah or the book of Jonah or anything like that. People are not, people are not, jumping up and down to study the book of Jeremiah. So, today we have read some 16 verses, 16 verses of chapter 40 of the book of Jeremiah. 16 verses of chapter 40 of the book of Jeremiah. And tomorrow we will read chapter 41. Tomorrow we will read chapter 41. And that's all I have for us today. That's all I have for us today. But the good news, of course, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the good news is also is that we still have time. 
We still have time to repent. We still have time to repent and turn our lives around to follow Jesus. We still have time. As long as there is breath pumping through our bodies, we still have time to repent. We still have time to return to the one and only Jesus for salvation and restoration. For he and he alone is our treasure trove of everlasting hope. This is Sonia McCullough Locker signing out for the Good News Sunday Show, Keyword Bible Studies, and the one and only Jesus.com. Thank you so much, and I pray that you have a great day in the Lord. Thanks.